What does a recipe for 1 million cupcakes actually look like? Filled with delicious custard cream, topped with dark milk chocolate ganache, and finished with a white chocolate glaze? Today I bring you 1 million Boston cream pie cupcakes. Starting with 12 and a half tons of all-purpose flour, and that's about enough to fill 7 old-school Mini Coopers. I did add a pinch of salt there, along with some baking powder. As I'm doing these million cupcakes in batches of 24, and I will put the recipe in the description for amounts less than a million if you don't need that many. All of these amounts for a million cupcakes are real and have been calculated with the help of ChatGPT, because I'm not that good at maths. I added two and a half tons of cornstarch next to help give a lighter texture to the final cupcake. Gave the ingredients a stir before getting 12 and a half tons of butter in a separate bowl and adding 10.4 tons of caster sugar and beating the whole thing together well and this will take a couple or three minutes let's say three and if you're doing a million of these in manageable batches of 24 you'll probably spend around eight or nine days beating your butter and sugar together until it's lightened in color and is well combined like this you will need to spend the next couple of days bringing it together to tidy it up a little bit before going in with your eggs one at a time and add in a tablespoon of the dry ingredients at the same time, before mixing in until fully incorporated each time, and you will need to repeat this process 166,666 times. And I won't show all of that process on camera because that would take about four months. Just believe me when I say that you'll end up with a mixture that has a smooth consistency like this. Whereupon you will be ready for the dry ingredients. I go in with half of the dry ingredients each time and half of however much milk I'm using, and a million cupcakes will require 8,300 litres of milk in total, which will take the average cow around nine months to produce. I'm folding the dry ingredients and the milk in carefully for a few days, before adding lemon juice and vanilla extract, both of which are optional, and 10,000 lemons or so will cover that amount, and they should just about fit in your bathtub. Fold everything together well until smooth for a couple of weeks, and we'll be ready to fill our cupcake cases. I use an ice cream scoop for this job, which gives me the perfect amount each time, and that means there'll be no wastage in this one million cupcake recipe. And for those one million, this filling process will take about 10 weeks if you don't take a break. The cupcakes need to be baked at 160 degrees Celsius fan setting, and that's around 320 Fahrenheit for 18 to 20 minutes, and baking one million cupcakes 24 at a time in a standard oven will take around one year and seven months. If you squeeze 36 in there, that will bring the time down to about 13 months, but I don't think the cupcakes would bake as well in such a crowded oven. I used the same amount of energy baking these that would power around four homes for a year or fully charge around 1,200 electric vehicles, but fortunately I don't have to test all of them for doneness, just one from each batch should be enough. And once cool, the cupcakes need to go in the fridge to chill, and you'll see why that is an essential step. A little bit later, I'll be filling each cupcake with a vanilla custard cream, creme pâtissier for all you pros, and this will require the separation of 200,000 eggs, and I just do this in my hand and allow the white to drop into a separate bowl, and it'll take around 700 hens a full year to lay that many eggs, but I'm sure they all felt it was worth pushing a massive egg out of their arsehole every day for a year, just so I can have a million cupcakes. Now, I don't need the egg whites, but I also don't want to waste them, so I'm going to keep them in an airtight box around the size of a large wardrobe, and I'll be able to use those for other things like making macarons or meringues or whatever. And I'll add about two tons of sugar to my egg yolks and around a Volkswagen Golf's weight of cornstarch, 16,666 pinches of salt, and then I'll whisk it together. The mix will be thick at first, but will eventually yield to a smooth, thick, glossy consistency which will be further flavoured with real vanilla and it is always best to use real vanilla for creme pâtissière. You would need around 30 to 50 thousand pounds worth of fresh vanilla to make this recipe and the vanilla needs to soak in about the amount of milk that the average person would drink in 238 years. Now large liquid amounts are usually made fathomable in terms of Olympic sized swimming pools aren't they but the amount of milk here would only fill about 0.6% of an Olympic-sized swimming pool, and that's not very impressive at all, really, is it? But I'm simmering the milk anyway, slowly, until it's hot but not boiling, 
and you can see here how the vanilla seeds have spread out and shared that flavour with the milk. And using my standard pan, I'd only have to do this about 17,000 times. Let's get the vanilla pods out. And we'll need them later, so don't throw them away. We'll use the hot milk to temper the eggs now by pouring in gradually like this. I've got my bowl on a tea towel here to stop it moving around. And I need to pour the hot milk in in increments so I don't scramble the eggs. And if you were doing this for one million cupcakes in one batch, my sources tell me you'd need a bowl about the size of a shipping container using a whisk about the size of a lamppost. And I have done that. It is much quicker that way. My eggs are tempered now and I've got the pan on a medium-high heat. We'll need to stir this constantly now, paying particular attention to the sides so the custard doesn't catch on the bottom of the pan. And after a few minutes, it will thicken significantly. And once you see a bubble popping up on the top, get it straight off the heat and continue stirring vigorously with your whisk or your lamppost, if that's what you're using. And let's carry on with the crazy weight comparisons by getting a Cessna 208 caravan's worth of butter in a dish with the vanilla pods and a sieve on top. And let's get the creme pat in, because if there are a couple of lumps lurking in there, we want to squeeze those out and the heat will melt the butter. And once that's all in, we need to stir well to fully incorporate that light aircraft's worth of butter before covering with cling film, touching the custard to prevent a skin developing. And then we need to get this creme patissier in the fridge and leave it until it is completely cold. And that will take a couple of hours, but while we're waiting for that to cool down completely, we can prepare the chocolate ganache topping with 15 tons of chocolate. And I like a 50-50 mix of milk and dark chocolate, and 15 tons of chocolate is roughly the amount eaten in the world. Every 18 hours, we're gonna melt the chocolate with 10,000 liters of hot double cream. And you would need 100,000 litres of milk to make that cream, so there will be some busy cows if you make this recipe. But even that amount of milk would still only fill 4% of an Olympic-sized swimming pool. And I'm still not impressed by these Olympic swimming pool comparisons. But I have to say, I am impressed with this smooth, glossy chocolate ganache. And I always go through the extra step of sieving my chocolate ganache just to make sure there are no leftover, unmelted, football-sized pieces of chocolate in there because we want a silky soft topping for our Boston cream pie cupcakes. And now I've gone the extra mile, you can see on my silicon spatula just how shiny and rich that chocolate ganache looks there. Ooh, it's absolutely glistening, that. Cover the ganache in cling film as well and allow to cool to the correct consistency, which we'll discover in a jiffy. But first we need to bring the cold custard cream back in and it needs to be whisked well to loosen the whole thing up. And of course, before whisking, don't forget to take out the vanilla pods that we left in there. And those vanilla pods have just given us a little more of the vanilla aroma of the sat in the creme pat. Our fridge cold cupcakes are back and we need them cold because we're going to chop their heads off with a thin serrated knife. Place the cupcake on a flat surface and you need to start cutting on the outside of the cupcake around a quarter or half a centimetre from the edge, angling the point of the knife towards the very centre of the bottom of the cupcake. So you're going in at an angle and slicing around to remove a cone-shaped piece of each one. This is how you would make butterfly cakes, remove an interior cone-shaped section, fill with buttercream, and then cut the removed piece in half and place on top of the buttercream in the form of butterfly wings. But I'm not doing that here. I want to keep the piece intact so it can be placed back on top later once the hole has been filled with our creme patissiere. So let's do that next with around two teaspoons of custard per cupcake. Don't fill too much, but be generous and bear in mind that once filled, the removed cake piece will be placed back on top and the weight of that piece will push out the custard if there's too much in there. But I think that looks okay. So let's do the remaining 999,999. And this should only take a couple of weeks if I don't sleep and I'll only need a space about the size of a football pitch to store all of these cakes while I wait for the ganache to reach the right texture, which is pretty much where I am at now. Almost. I like to begin icing the cakes when the ganache is a little runny because it does gradually thicken up as you work, especially if you're doing lots of these, which I genuinely am here. Lump a heaped teaspoon on top and then with the back of your spoon, just gradually work it around to cover the custard under the cake lid. You want that custard filling to be a pleasant surprise for anyone eating the cake. 
A lot of Boston cream pie cupcake recipes just have a thin layer of creme pat on top and then a thin layer of ganache. But this way, while being a little more tricky to do, is much better and much more extravagant. I'm going to do this a couple more times here and it takes me around 45 seconds to glaze each cupcake. So I reckon I can get all these done in about a year and a half. But if I got the entire population of Middlesbrough to help me, it would take about five minutes. But then you'd have to organise everything, tell everybody what to do and give them space to work, provide food and water and adhere to health and safety regulations. It's going to be a logistical nightmare, so I'll just do them all myself. I haven't really got anything better to do after all. And once I've cracked through all that, I need to lay them out ready for the final decorative glaze. You may find that the chocolate will dull a little on top, especially if they've been kept in the fridge. So I'm going to bring back the shine with a hairdryer, which is a great way to give a chocolate glaze that shiny look. And you can probably shine one million up in about the time it would take for the average woman to blow dry her hair. And that is to say about an hour or so. And for the final flourish, I will decorate the tops of my Boston cream pie cupcakes with some flamboyantly piped melted white chocolate. I melted it gently in the microwave in short bursts. And I'll add it to a piping bag with a thin nozzle. I made sure to twist the nozzle end of the piping bag so the chocolate doesn't run out. And I'll place the whole thing in a tall thin cup for easy melted chocolate gathering, which is what you're witnessing here. And while the chocolate is still warm and runny, just simply scatter it on top of the cakes and three tons of white chocolate should be enough. And I reckon around 43 untrained men could lift a piping bag with that much chocolate in it. Let's have a close-up of the finished product. And my back of a bigger mat calculations tell me that there'll be a double-decker bus full of waste cupcake cases. Once these are all eaten, I'm going to have a bite now. And just look at that luscious interior. Let's get in closer, eh? One million Boston cream pie cupcakes that look and taste a million dollars. Have fun with that one and let me know how it goes in about two years when you're finished with it. See you next time, eh? Ten.